sharing tonight. This is for my artist support pledge. So I just thought I would put that out there. Um, bear with me two seconds. Yes, okay, so that's done. Okay. This afternoon I actually sat here and I painted. Ah, oh, it's the new measurement train. Okay, right. So it's obviously up in your neck of the woods right now then, Luke. So I don't blame you for giving me the flick about 8.30. I don't want you to miss that. And what I was saying was that I was actually um, uh, filming and painting a, a collared dove. Um, that I'd done one in watercolour a few months ago. But uh, I decided that I would do this one in charcoal. So I did it, filmed it. And I've just actually put it up on the auction site at Instagram uh, for sale. So uh, it's a great little painting and uh, it'll be great for somebody who snaps it up. Anyway, that's all that out of the way. Let's look at this. Now I was saying about the fact that it's a beautiful little bird. Uh, I'm going to do it in watercolour. Hopefully that there are some lovely subtleties in the water that we can bring to bear when we're doing this. It's going to be mainly a layering process. Um, need to see put the code on my tablet we've all just seen it mm, what code what code what code ah, what code oh have I just tapped in my code <laughs> oh silly boy how daft. Okay, I will tap and change the code. How daft am I? All right, thanks very much. Uh, it's only going to do you any good if you've got this in your hands. But uh, there you go. Easily forgotten. And I did just that. Good evening, Ben. Right, okay. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I can't even cut that out, so I'm going to have to... Uh, cha change the code as you say um, right thanks very much for that Wendy what a silly fool 13 watching cheers Ben and I'm going to get back to the plot this lovely little dab chick um, I felt that it would look good in watercolour and as I say it's going to be a layering process um, and that said uh, it's also got lots of lovely warm and cool values going on so I thought there was enough subtlety and there would be some fantastic um yeah all right luke so i i yeah uh, don't change your code on camera no i'm not going to change it on camera i'm going to change it later but it only does you any good if you've got my pad in your hands it's not going to help you otherwise because my code is just to get onto that pad no more <laughs> uh, right okay let's start looking at it now it is a slight angle okay and I, I set it um, on my screen a little bit higher than you're seeing it. So I just wanted to put a little bit more height into it and a little bit water underneath it. So I'm going to put it just west, uh, west of center, as it were. And I'm just going to make a few little marks just to begin and get a feel for the shape of the bird. Now it is, as I say, it's a stunning little creature. Uh, lovely thick little beak um, and got that characteristic white mark there which we need to preserve that two ways of doing it you can of course um, you can sort of uh, mask it out if you feel so uh, disposed whatever <laughs> I'll put my teeth in it's one of those right um, so <laughs> that's throwing me so I'm going to Ah, it's going to be one of those nights, isn't it? There's the nice beak there, and I'm just going to change a few of the marks already. I can see I'm just going off kilter a little bit. I want to get that lovely long throat in, and there's a lovely cast shadow, and then that comes down to the point to where the water is. Now, it's got a large or apparent large head and a very short part to the beak, and then the body over here. But already I feel that, you know, we are two way over. So I'm going to take this out very, very quickly for before we get too far into it. 
and move the whole thing over just a little bit further and just going to start it here and come around with this shape at the back of the neck first off and let that little tuck scoop in the bottom there little angle on the top and do a bit of concentrating would be good um, and coming down and a long taper into the beak which then comes off like so now they got the long throat into there and then we are already way off for the neck I've cut this neck down too soon so I'm going to come back in and just check that one more time and come in there and a lot of this painting is about the drawings got to be said and just going to put that lovely curvature into the back and over the top it's got a stunk short little body um, spends most of its time diving into and feeding reeds in the weeds and underwater vegetation and there's its back leg and that can just disappear under the water and you know apart from getting that part about right then of course this pretty much sorts itself out you've got the division between the two wings they're very short wings coming down and over the top sitting on there you can't see too much of that one and it just disappears into the neck there so the biggest thing is is to see how much of this do we need to raise up or change well it comes into the bulb of the head and the skull fairly soon and I'm just making a few changes as I see them um, on here and then that needs to be I feel to be tapered a little more than it was then to bring the beak out so top of the mandible and the bottom like that you've got the joint between the two mandibles and it cuts through that lovely white fleshy piece of skin that you see right there on the edge of the beak and we need to make sure that we don't miss that and there's a little tap of white underneath now we can't save that uh, equally we can't save a little white tap on the front of the beak either we've just got to work with it and then we'll come back in with some gouache right at the end I'm just going to set the eye somewhere where I think it should be and then I'm just going to go over with the shape of the uh, eye socket and round it there and let that come in like so so now I'm going to just check this again and there is the shape of the almost like a drawer it's like a cheek comes down and it's a bit of a shape not unlike the uh, larger cousin uh, the great crested grieve has a much more defined uh, shape here that we all know and love especially use when it's displaying right so I'm just checking that again and seeing if I need to change anything and I keep looking at it and and it's you know it's just one of those things you've got to keep checking checking your drawing and I think that needs to stop about there and then this is where the water comes all the way around here like so all right and there's water actually where it's just come up there's a little drop of water on the back of its neck and I'm going to put that in like so and quite dark so we've got a shape over here now the eye to me is set too far back sorry if I'm not looking at everything here uh, where, where have I missed uh, uh, 13 watching don't change your code on camera no laugh 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 bonsoir no um, Judy hi Judy Ben okay <laughs> I'm assuming no one else has said anything um, okay so I'm gonna put the eye now um, a little closer I lost that and I want to put that back in and it sort of comes over a little bit lower than what I've got it there so I'm going to change the shape of it and put the eye somewhere about there actually just above it so a little more forward than I had it and let's bring it down like so that's more grebe like I can see it straight away and I'm going to bring that down like so and that can come that way so I've changed that at the same time so I'm going back into the neck 
Sorry about all the drawing, but it has got to be a little bit right, of course. And rather do it now than try and rectify it in the painting process. And that's not going to happen so easily. So I'm going to bring that down a little there. And I want to extend the beak just a shade further to there. And we've got that little upward turn on the bottom mandible that Greaves have got. And there's a little another color in there which I mustn't try and forget. Okay, now we've got the interest. We have got this wonderful uh, reflective surface. And I'm just going to suggest it in a minute. I may not do it all and it may not be wholly accurate. I'm just going to try and suggest one or two areas that are you know that I need to preserve so I've got some idea moving on into this picture where I need to protect things so they lift off there and there into those little circles and then we've got this nice shape of the head somewhere like this and it doesn't matter if it's not exact to the photo as long as it reads correctly it's a, within the ballpark you're fine and I'm just going to suggest that and that there. Just going to take that. So now, what else do I need to think about? Well, I've got a little bit of uh, slapdash going on in the back here. So I'm just going to put in one or two areas. They've got a stumpy little tail. And then you've got this part here going into. There's the tail there, such as it is. Uh, and then you've got a little bit. Uh, where do we put the leg? The hind leg is there and that has got that part there's a bit of wet feather over the top of it just there that's hiding it and so we've got a dark mark that leads into the give us the shape of the wing dark up through there the rest is going to paint itself I do hope um, make it cute that's cute isn't that cute maybe it's not cute enough for young Luke I'm just going to darken the eye and try and please Luke by making it a little cuter. And uh, just put that through there like so. Is that cute enough yet, Luke? We'll try. All right. I'm not going to do any more. I think that we're pretty much there. Um, I'm just going to put a shallow mark through there just change the angle of that looked a little bit too rounded and um, on there and coming up to what would be the shoulders and down again into this area here and then that comes around as it forms and follows the light round and we've got lots of uh, wet feather of course all right there we go that's enough for the drawing. So I'm going to put the pencils away. Get rid of those for a moment. Are we still on? We're still working. Everything is happening as it should do. How many people, Ben? Because if it's not 15, I'm going to turn the stream off and go home. Right. Let's have a look at this. I want to put some washes on. And the thing about washes are that, you know, you put your lightest wash on first and um, you can you know as long as the colors that you're putting on are going to be darker than your wash it really doesn't matter where the wash goes the only exception to that is if you're doing a very pale blue wash which we are on this one and you've got predominantly umbers and browns and richness then the blue could tint those a little bit moving down the road so you may want to uh, do this and avoid much of this you can come through the beak you can come through other parts but try and avoid that if you can so let us put our wash on I am very bad I have not washed or cleaned my palette from the last painting session that I did with it which is typical okay we got 15 that is good hi to everybody whether you're acknowledged on here or not it's good to know that you're watching in the background. Excuse me. Excuse my head. There we go. Need some of that. Right. Lots of paper. 
So this is the fun bit. We've got rid of the groggy bit and the drawing, and I'm not unhappy with it. I'm sure with more time and a lot more patience, it could be better. Just changed up to 15. That could have been a short stream. It could well have been, and I would have held myself to account over that. It would have been a very short stream. Okay, let's clean this out before I completely lose the plot, which is quite possible today. Wendy, I don't know if I told you this story about my books. Did I tell you a story about my books today? I might have done. Just let me know if I did, and I'll keep it to myself. I won't say it anymore. Right, let's go and look at our blues. Now, to me, it's a quite a warm blue, almost virgin on a bit of violet to it. So let's look at that, and let's just mix up a lot, because we've got a big wash. So let's put a lot of water down in the pan, and let's look at some ultramarine blue to start with. Very pale color, just a tap of magenta in there, just to shift it a little bit warmer, a little bit more violety. If you're ever unsure of the color, then, uh, then I put up a count. <laughs> well, I hope not. We've gone down again, so if it is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the stream off then. <laughs> anyway, always mix up enough. And if you're not sure of your color, then have a little test piece of watercolor nearby so you can just try it out and just check out where you're at with it. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, there's a story for everybody then. Um, so last week, or a few, two or three weeks ago, as you all know, I have been converting this office in here, uh, which was a big bookcase there and another one over there and my desk and another bookcase here and another one over there and I had no room and I wanted to do so much more including stream in here um, and do all my railway modeling over there and so I set about altering the whole of the inside of this room and it took several days a lot of hard work but hey I've got time on my hands right now um, so I set two and I put two big bookshelves over there right above my TV computers everything and they took the biggest heaviest books that I've got and I put a lot of brackets under it I put about five under you know, about a foot apart done it all thought it's fantastic they all went up there I sat there working away and yesterday or day before yesterday I actually came and sat and started to film just got everything set up here to film something for you guys and uh, I heard this creak uh, which followed by a crumble and a crunch and all my books come hurtling down I'm talking some of these books are heavy thick lumps of material you know great big heavy books um, and um, yeah they were just scattered everywhere and my most expensive and brand spanking new all by a couple of months old computer took the brunt of most of them I could not believe when I pulled them all off and uncovered this that it it screen was open and flattened back no damage a little little shade of a dent on one part of the um, bodywork but hey nothing more so anyway I digress so I went out the next day and bought a load more brackets more thicker heavy duty raw plugs and screws bunged it all up there I hope anyway sorry guys digress <laughs> there you go that's my book story over with um, okay now we're going to put this wash in and I'm just going to come in I'm using a not uh, a, sorry a rough paper now I'm going to be very careful coming around the bird I'm going to leave this to uh, do its own thing for the most part but I do want this bead to come all the way through here and all the way down the paper and missing the bird as I say I want to save that to being a um, lovely warm color oh that's picked up a little bit of dirt being a bit careful a bit more water a bit more color bring that on down lose that it's not a problem come through the beak if I want to again it's not a problem 
bring it down under the chin and around the bird and here it really doesn't make a lot of odds because this is all going to be altering anyway so I'm going to bring that down okay and let this flow and keep the bead alive this is the trick with any watercolor uh, that you're doing in terms of a wash you need to have the bead stay alive if you allow any part of this to dry up ahead of time your painting's done there is no coming back from it and just lift a little bit out with a damp brush so it doesn't pull up and cause a funny shape take the edge off of there the thing to note about watercolor is that how lu wow lucky on that computer yeah um i tell you what i was annoyed but i was pr almost getting ready to sacrifice a couple of goats to the gods in thanks because uh that would have just about finished me off <laughs> i can't imagine what i would have done anyway you can see the subtlety of this and i'm allowing this bead to come in what i'm now going to do is increase now the the water in the foreground isn't that heavy but i want to put some weight into it around here because it helps stabilize and give the painting a bit of weight at the bottom so it will still dry an awful lot lighter than you see it right now and we're going to have to have a little i should have waited and told you my story while i was after i'd done this because we've got to wait for this to dry really before i do any more so i'm going to take this all the way through like so and it's done let that do its own thing now i in an ideal world i would just let that settle down and let it flow and give an even wash because i'm using ultramarine it will have a granular effect that it goes without saying it is a granular color so it's going to have this granular effect but not to worry the nice wash coming all the way down through i missed a bit up there i'm not too worried about that it's just what it is i'm not going to attempt to go back in on it i'll wreck the whole thing but let it just settle down now as i said in an ideal world it would be fantastic just to let that do what it wants but unfortunately we don't have that time so i'm going to have to push things a little bit so here's the time to push your mute buttons if you wish to good ear isn't it i'm holding it quite a way off Okay, it's probably not totally dry but the thing is that had I let that dry naturally it would have probably been a lovely even uh, bleed of color but because I use the air on it it starts drying areas and if you get a little area of your wash that's not as um, wet as another area when you came over it it's gonna dry sooner so the thing is that you start getting things like this happen now on this watery effect it's not a big deal because we've got lots of other values that we can lay over that and that will lose it so I'm not worried but if it was a big sky and you did that always if you can spare the time and let it dry naturally it's so much easier than having hot air forcing it to dry faster uh, and odd things starting to happen okay I'm coming out of that I'm gonna leave that pot of blue in the bottom there um, and I'm going to start looking at the first initial color over the bird itself. For, I'm just going to double check that we are dry enough and we are. So now I'm going to put in a very uh, little bit of orange 
just a tint it I don't want too much I'm just looking at it and I just want to come over with a very soft orangey color uh, in here like so now it could be considered too strong but we can take some of that out and I want to tap in a little blue over here too just to give that a little bit of a cooling over the back of the wing so I could see that is there and I'm just going to put that color in and this is just our base initial color for the plumage moving forward so this is literally your first coat on, on the deal then may as well bring it into here and all the way through to the back and I'm going to take that little bit out a little bit of oil paint we do not want that <laughs> I'm just going to tap out that little bit of space there because I want to put that in a little bit of blue there and then take off the excess now you want to cool that down and then just come over with the whole of the rest of this over the head and by all means in the beat preserve that piece of white we may have to go into that anyway later but there we are that's all we need to do and I'm just going to put a bit of a cooling color down the front end here so added a little bit of that blue into the orange it will dirty up and corrupt making a dirty gray color but that's no problem with that whatsoever okay so I think that can just set up and we can leave that now and we'll come back to it how are we doing with everything everybody uh, half past seven we're not doing too bad half hour in done the drawing and got the first coat done mm. not to mention a glug okay so I can see we're 32 minutes down according to this on the actual timing but I don't know if I can still figure out how many people we've got according to this I've got two I hope that's not the case because I'm going to go home all right uh, yeah well you know I've got to do a lot of thinking Luke I don't just do it like that it takes a bit of time <laughs> I'm gonna come in now with my next that blue has got a bit corrupted let's get rid of that I must really learn to clean out my palettes I keep telling all you guys to do that and I don't seem to take my own piece of advice but it would be good if I did. Uh, thank you, Wendy. I'm glad about that. It's um, been a long time coming. Um, it was just literally a little gizmo that's all I was waiting for. Um, cheers, John. Um, and it's made all the difference because now I'm no longer streaming uh, through third-party software, through my camera, on my phone, etc., etc., etc. This is a uh, cam link. Uh, through a 4k camcorder um, so it makes all the difference this is what I film all my train videos with it's what I film all my art videos with so it can sit up the top there now in that position and probably not move for the better part I'm going to make another mix I'm using some more ultramarine blue and I'm going to corrupt it with a little bit of indigo this time not too much want it a little darker than it was and I'm just going to come in with some um, fairly loose marks like so. Not too much pigment, just one or two little areas that are considered uh, sort of watery. But look at the way the water is moving in these lovely little ringlets around the bird. Okay, just subtle little marks catching the edges of where the um, you know you can imagine it where some of the water is in shadow to the sky as it's being disturbed by the bird itself and that's what I'm looking to repeat is some of these lovely little marks I'm not going to get them perfect and I'm not going to even try to get them perfect I just want to try and make them spot on no. <laughs> I'm just going to try and make them look watery and that's what I think I need to do is try and make them look a bit watery bit of dry brush it doesn't matter it, it's it's all I'm trying to do is to look at the softness now if I want to go over some of these and soften them up later I can do that all right 
by just looking at the marks at the moment that we're making. Just move one or two of them around a little bit and around here and let's get some of this working down through here. And see, feel me scratching, that's where I'm using my fingers pretty much as a level. Um, and change one or two of these marks going up into the back here and some of them sort of just coming into the edge of the bird like so okay there's a lot more in the painting than, or in the photos sorry than I've allowed for I'm not worried if I've got exactly the right amount or what I just need this to be watery and of course I'm looking at a small part of the overall image so you know I'm not seeing the whole of all of these ripples in many regards I'm just seeing one or two and it's going to put a few bits of disturbed water around here where it's been kicking its legs and moving and disturbing it at all Let's look at that, looks quite nice, so be happy with that and come around with one or two more through here. Just playing around with some of the shapes in the foreground, some of them going a little bit darker. Like so. And then there is a little bit of warmth. Now I'm going to actually put a little bit of orange and colour up some of these marks because they are showing as a little bit orangey that um, especially under the bird here I'm guessing they're reflecting a little bit of the bird color itself I'm just going to change one or two and suggest that that's what we're seeing I'm not quite sure if that's the case or not but that's what I'm doing like so All right, and I'm going to come back to the blue and a little bit of the indigo. It's a little bit too heavy. Take that out of there. A bit more water with that. Maybe even a touch of magenta back into that mix and allow that to soften as it comes away and add weight. Just a little soft color, extra color of oranges coming in, trying not to put too much into that, I'm going to do this while it's damp because obviously it will pick up and start spreading and lose that bit for kick off, in fact I'll join that piece to that piece that's not a problem okay now if you want any of these to be uh, the camera is a um, Sony um, and it's a uh, a something 53 something like that I can tell you later when I look at it but just gonna soften some of these edges so they're not as strong but I've got to work fairly fast because obviously the whole of this wants to dry up very very fast and if you don't want hard edges on all of them there's nothing wrong with some of them but if you don't want all of them to be a hard edge then you need to respond fairly fast and change some of the, the marks that you're getting just a little bit of dampness in the brush will tease a lot of those out don't join too many together like I'm doing. All of this pretty much up here is a done deal. Um, I will probably mess things up far too quickly if I try and alter too many. It might have been better policy to have done a few, softened and moved on. Um, but being that I'm not brain of Britain right now, I didn't think of that, but not a problem. Just softening some of them now as we move on. All right, I'm not too unhappy anyway. I quite like what's going on. Now I don't think that this colour was a reflection of the bird at all. 
I think that either that or these are reflective marks from reeds and stuff. So I'm going to put in one or two darker, dirtier marks up in here. That is a little too orange. I'm just going to come back in with one or two more up in the back here. Just to support the top and one or two through here. Now they are moving at a different color, or not color, a different um, they're not going following the same blue marks they are rippling over and doing their own thing in other areas like this and they're making longer marks but they are not necessarily following the same ones as the exact the blue ones some of them are and some of them I will respect that others I'm just going to put in what I think where they should go and what they're doing Just playing around with it. Uh, where are we going? Look, how are people enjoying V Day? They spit far through of my house, and the red O's came across a tiny bit too far away for the sea. Ah, do you know, I was so busy in here today um, doing stuff, I absolutely forgot that half of the street out there were having a big street party. I never realized till my son came round to pick something up at a distance um, and said, have you seen how many people are out there, Dad? I said, I didn't know anyone was out there. And this, shame on me, but uh, I still remember VE Day, of course. Who wouldn't, and why wouldn't you? Very important day in our history. All right, I'm just tapping in one or two other marks and colors. I'm wet enough still to join in and it's not a problem um, I don't want to overdo it but I don't want to underdo it but I've got to try and get it all backed up and doing as I want to do it right now as opposed to later there's a couple of the marks that come through there like so and I'm going to put those in and the dry brush is not a problem it's quite a nice effect so don't be afraid if you scratch across and you get quite a dry brush look it really isn't a problem I'm using a little bit more combination directly of the browns, uh, the oranges and the um, blue. So that too is working. There's, I can start bringing out some of these shadows soon as well, these reflections, not shadows. Um, so I'm just sort of looking where I want to put a few more. All right, maybe a little bit warmer couple of them okay just moving the stuff around and playing with the shapes and the forms do too much more at the moment I just want to see where we are with a lot of it before I carry on um, no actually Luke you're right we had a little flyer come round to our house a couple of weeks ago about this street party that was being planned I thought it was a bit of a hoax I saw a little kitty deliver it to the door uh, I suppose the parents were hiding around the corner <laughs> but we saw his kitty drop it in and I went and saw it a couple of days later it had been laying there and I said I saw it about the street party and I thought well that's obviously not going to happen I thought because we're in lockdown so you know it's a bit crazy planning something like that but hey who am I to know they obviously held it um, I think everyone kept their distance and anything they were shouting at each other but uh, I didn't hear much of that either. Just going to come in with one or two of those darker warm marks through here just to suggest that there is some connection to the from the front to the back. Uh, 
and one or two off through here. Nothing too much. I don't want to take, you know, up here is almost, almost too much to my taste because I want the bird to be doing what it's going to do. You know, part of me wants to try and lift some of this, but I know if I do that like that, I'm just going to end up wrecking it. So I've got to live with that and work with that. Um, Ah, okay. Um, well, uh, <laughs> trouble is I can't just decide on a few colours, Bridget. <laughs> I keep adding more. This pan is designed to take sixteen, uh, yeah, sixteen colours, and I've got myself a whole load more in there than I should do. Um, it, I got. There are so many wonderful colours in watercolour. I just love them. Don't necessarily use many of them. My favouritest of all my blues has got to be my um, indigo. Uh, it's a great blue. Um, uh, my favourite hot colour is got to be transparent or translucent orange. And making that with the blue is a fantastic way of getting a dark, good blacks. Uh, so yeah, I hope that answers it. Um, but it's a tough one, so I've got so many likes. Right, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start layering down on the bird now. And I'm going to go in with a um, fairly mundane red colour. And that's going to be my um, Indian red, primarily. I'm going to make a mix over to one side. Then come in and put a little bit of the blue here. So if I want to jump from cool to warm, I have that option. I'm going to take out that one for a minute and put a bit more of that in there. So I'm just going to come over and I'm going to start almost drawing with the brush. Got a lovely point to the brush. And I'm almost drawing some of these marks and shapes in because the bird has got light marks showing but this can be that color pretty much all the way through there because it's going to dry up lighter and we're going to put darker ones on top so that I can get away with. Here I'm coming in with some darks but they are turning a bit blue I'm going to tap a little bit of the blue into the back there and let that come over. We are still nowhere near the depth of colour we need to be further in, but I'm just giving this like almost a second wash. And again over here. I'm going to leave a few areas that are broken to, to signify the lighter feathers as they go up over the top. And then mass it up here. I said mass not mess uh, and then that will allow me the darker ones to go on top of that and they will sort of pretty much stop around in here so that's where that's going to end and I'm going to come in with a combination of the blues and the reds in here initially just to give me a look and I want to make that even richer I'm going to use some orange which is too strong and I'm going to mix that up with some raw sienna and put that into this area here I'm going to give that a lot more richness to it and in here too and I'm going to come back in with the darker values later on I think that needs to have that lovely glow as it goes into some of these other values in here let them mix up not a big deal and let's just put that right to the water's edge like so and uh, we're going to leave some i'm actually going to put a little bit into that water line just about through there i'm going to leave that i'm not worried about that it's just going to stay there and now i'm going to put in some more orange and a bit more of the raw but this time I'm putting a not a bit of that a little bit of the uh, red the uh, vermilion in I'm just coming into places like the back of the tail just tap that out and it kind of come in around the cheek and the neck leave that little bubble area out and see how that is strong I'm going to add in that yellow of mine is very dirty from the last painting and try and get a bit of pure yellow out into here like so mixing straight into the paint 
and then come in with some darker rich colors in here let that bleed together watch your edges and let that go back into the back of the neck and let it travel around the back of the head and you can get a bit richer and a bit darker now so let's go in with some burnt sienna into our blues make it rich and let's go in with a bit of uh, indigo into that see how dark that looks and it's quite good so let's just come in with a nice shape to the top of the head like so and we need some strength so I'm going to come in with a lovely rich orange deep color deep fiery color into that dark and let those two bleed together and merge and set themselves up Look how rich that really is, that's lovely. Hi Teresa, nice to see you could join us. Ah, you're not one of these people that are out dancing around your maypole then. <laughs> right, okay, let's just leave that to settle down. And I want to bring some of that in in a minute, but I can't quite get that where I want it to at the moment, so I'm just gonna have to be a little more patient let that come into there and just dry off a little bit but before the rest of this dries off I do have to be a little bit quicker off the mark as it were and get some of that red and that orange that richness going on uh, in these darks and check the shape of the head as it comes flattens out quite a lot here and we're going to bring that all the way down to about there leave it damp at the moment Cross to the top of the eye and then we're leaving an area under the eye coming around with the dark and into and around that little white fleshy part we must keep that and even though I'm not using a um, piece of gouache on at the moment I may not need to if I'm careful about what I do and I am trying to be really careful about it I can leave that and it will just sit on the top there and look really punchy I'm going to put in some more indigo to that now quite rich and dark under here pump it up like so and I'm going to do the same put another blast of the indigo let it bleed wet in wet let it go wherever it wants to with a little bit of control but then you're starting to form the dark and the rich colors that this bird is looking for. Now there are one or two taps of feathers off. If you feel happy about doing it now, it's a good time. Just let them set like that. And then bring the rest of this dark down. And at the end of the day, you've got to consider this part of the painting is the make or break. This is the real... Uh, you know, if you get this wrong, it gets it stays wrong. It's as simple as that. So it's going to put in that dark around there, and then into there, and let that settle down. And I want to come in with a lot warmer colours. I want more red. I want more orange. Now they are very dirty and they are very corrupted because of what's happening with the blues. But I want to put in this lovely shadow across here on this one okay I'm just going to check that shape there because I've lost a little bit of paint out from there and put that in carefully doing it there I go that's good now before that top part dries up I do need to put in a tiny bit of ultramarine blue and let that settle back to the whitest color that I've got there so I want to put it in and I want the black that's still wet to fuse into it but it must be the blue as it comes down to a point like so and then it will go back to the darker color again as it comes around the base of the eye just put that in bring that down like that to the top of the beak and literally stop 
Okay, now having done that, I want to lift a bit out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going in with a smaller round brush, put that one to one side for a minute, gently dampen it off and just literally lift. So that area of the forehead is catching the light and it will go around the edge of the eye and giving that eye structure, form, shape and all the things that you need it to do like so. And hopefully that's all it will need. Uh, I'm going to have a glug because I'm mine um, get a bit dry. Hmm. Well, before I forget, happy VE day to everybody. Um, it, uh, yeah, happy VE day. All right, okay, so I'm just going to straighten that part there. Moving on. And I'm going to bring some of these dark colors now because we've got the warmth here. Let's bring them on down through. And they miss the front of the chest because that's catching a bit of reflected light. But you could lift a little bit out if you feel. And I feel that there is a need just to lift a bit of pigment off of that front lead edge. And then to go back in with some of these darks once more. More blue more orange like I said um, Bridget they are my favorite colors <laughs> so we're gonna carry on we've got a lovely rich color going on in here I love it and really darks and I'm gonna start now working on the rest of the bird this way and they're gonna first off I'm gonna put in cooler colors over the back and just look at those and just they're very fine touches a little bit over the back of the elbow and that will be the elbow about there I think if I'm not mistaken and then just come in here and soften off edges move the paint around a little bit more blue will go in here maybe a little bit of magenta to that blue it's got a lot of corruption in it take that out and come back in actually I'm going to use some ultramarine violet that too is a very quick violet blue very very nice just has that little bit of coolness in it and I'm going to use that now and sweep that over in places over the back here now I don't want it to replace all of the oh sorry about that <laughs> I don't want it to replace all of the oranges merely some of them so I'm just going to tap a little bit back come back in again get a bit more of the blue mix and just play around with the shapes and the forms and let that sort of create the, the little bits of feather in the streaking between the wet and the dry or actually they're all wet but what's happening is because the purplier bits the darker bits are clumping together which shows the uh, uh, softer down underneath that's resisting the water uh, I think I will be correct in saying that I'm not 100% and I'm not going to try and paint the water but oh yes I am going to try and put a little bubble on there why not let's have a go at that so that's going to put in a little bead of water sitting on the back there are a couple of them let's try and I try and put one in there if I can just suggest it for a minute I might well regret that but we'll see this has got a lot of rich darks in it, so I'm going to come around here now. More oranges, more reds. Get them going. And it tucks its way around the back of there. And I said there was a nice sort of wet feather over the back of the leg. And bring that into here. And it sort of cradles that little bit of wet. And we've got lots of lovely warm colors happening. They sort of peel off into the wings, like so. And we've got some coming out this way. A little bit lighter, a little bit less impactive at this point. Change into a bit of blue. Almost drawing with the brush in part. almost drawing and 
looking at the darker shape there's a dark shape running through there which I'm just going to put in how are we doing for time we are where are we we're an hour in ooh okay right but I'm working as fast as we possibly can I'm just trying to suggest some of the darker areas at the back there always unsure about doing a wildlife piece in a set time like this um, if it goes wrong it goes horribly wrong and when it goes right it can take quite a bit of time <laughs> so uh, we gotta see it might be good it might not be so hot we'll see right okay now I'm gonna start looking at the way that these feathers they are literally these lovely little plumes. I'm just going to simply draw a few out um, as they would be going like so and then I will change the look of some of them and to beef them up as it were as I feel I need to and they get smaller around here and you don't notice so much of them, they're quite a bit darker so I'm going to put a bit of a dark value in there, mix some of that down let that come out and start filling some of these shapes especially around here and it's still damp enough to be able to play around with it like that I put quite a bit of water into it so it's not dried up so much and that's another thing about not using you know hair dryers too frequently too fast don't jump to them um, if you can help it stay away and let the thing dry fairly naturally and it will pay you dividends by doing that it's only because I'm demonstrating that I have to resort to one at all I'm pretty sure as often or not I wouldn't bother with one um, unless I really needed to I'm just coming in here with a few darks around here and around there now I've got that very bluish looking uh, bit of indigo bit of dirty colours. I'm just going to put in the back leg. I want it quite light and come back over it again. So I'm putting a lighter value in to begin with, like so. And then that sort of just dips in under the water and disappears from view. And we'll leave that to dry and there's actually a little bit on the one over, there's the tail, there's another bit of the other leg there. So I'm going to put that in and leave that where we do I haven't got into any of this yet we've got a long way to go before we get to there and I want to leave I wanted that a little bit whiter actually I've lost that but I can't change that just want to put in a little bit of blue pale cobalt blue just to give that a cooler look just there bit too much just tap in a little bit and leave it and I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt just gently tapping over some of these areas and hopefully it's dry enough to be able to take it hmm wasn't I going to be putting a bubble there? Just lost my bubble. Right, I'm going to come round. I'm going to try and save the bubble. By going over like that. And putting that down there. Um. Okay. Well, there you go. Um... You don't make yourself late though for the bub for the banana, mate. You get make sure you get to see it. And I'm gonna come in here with some more darks in here and kinda try and do what I was doing over there with just some of these lovely shapes of feather through here. And coming down into that part there and there's a little tuck in there and it comes down to the waterline like so something like that leave it like that 
and we get a much darker waterline than we have of the bird at this point so you need to preserve quite a bit of these nice bright colors moving forward so I'm now coming in with a bit of a slatier blue dirtier color and try and refine some of these wetter values of the feathers just tapping with my finger here and there just to break them up a little bit so they're not completely solid lines and a little bit more open as they come around here actually and not so dirty the more uh, orangey as they come around to this so I'm going to observe that too and then they get quite dark again so let's come back in with the big meaty color and make it quite warm and now we're going to come in uh, had a bit of wet there somewhere I'm just going to come in with a couple of these darks in here just wet that area up a little bit again and I'm going to come back out with some of these other colors and quite a strong sort of striated lines which are the way we're seeing the ends of these wet feathers as they come off and it's all painting these optical illusions of course that's what it's all about like so and a little bit of serious dark in one or two places don't be worried about dark a lot of people think that they can't paint dark watercolors of course you can and watercolor is just the material is how you perceive and uh, render the subject that becomes more important Okay, so I think that works quite nicely. And I think there's actually quite a lovely uh, touch of cobalt and a little bit of magenta into it. Just dirtying, but down here is a little bluish colour. And I want to take that in and take it back off. I want it there, but I don't want it there. If that makes any sense whatsoever, I'm sure it does to somebody. But I just want the hint of that little bit of blue there and let that dry off and see how that goes all right we're going to put in a little bit of blue color too to the top mandible of our beak and just going to put that in and let that dry off before we go back in with any other color so there's the top of our beak in place and I'm actually going to go in I'm going to put in the bottom part in the same color I can get away with it I'm going to leave it like that for now Right, um, I'm going to put the eye in, and very dark it needs to be too. So let's make sure we've got that in place. The eye obviously is important, and um, I am going to just take the brush down to a very fine brush that I've got somewhere, which I use an awful lot. It's a semi-rigger, but it's not quite a rigger. It will grow up to be a rigger one day, I'm sure. I keep telling it it will. So let's go in with a very dark. Now the darkest I've used are uh, Indian red and indigo. That sort of gives me a very cool, very dark color. I'm just going to come in here and carefully draw the eye in. And I'm trying to observe the light, but worst case scenario if I lose it I lose it and I'll put it in with some gouache but if you can get away with it then try and do so because it is going to be a lot stronger white than the gouache possibly could be I'll put a little bit of blue into the top side of that and I pretty much lost that light then I may be able to keep that bit and just add to it, I don't know. But I just wanted to get that just spot on. A little bit of um, ochre underneath. 
I had a bit too much water with it, so that's going to bleed and do some horrible things. I must lift that. Just one mark too many. Um, yeah, I just wanted to put this in and then let it settle down, but it just got too much water in the brush. All right, that's what I want, and I just want to tease some of that color into there. Like that. And I want some orange, but this time I'm going to add some cad red to it. Cadmium red is a opaque color, and that will just make sure that this becomes quite rich here, because it sits almost on the top, not letting light come through, and you get that lovely rich color working round. And then if I want to take that back out, I can take this out to that dark here. One more layer over the top, as it were. And a bit more red into the mixer. I'm always a little bit low for cadmium red. I use it sometimes in oil painting, not as much as I used to. But there's nothing wrong with it at all. It's just that in watercolor, it is a very strong color to be using uh, if you're trying to keep things nice and um, sort of fresh, as it were. Okay, I'm just adding a little bit of blue back into that. And then I want to add some of this dark coming down from the beak. Just want to check this shape here before I finish. This will be the last time we touch this part apart from putting in the little bit of the throat and a little bit of the dark there and just bring that down from there quite dark passage there and more reds and more and this is a good combination right there using raw sienna and the cadmium red at this point bring that into some of these values here I'm going to go back to the slightly bigger brush because the fine brush hasn't got the drag power that this one will have. Let's bring that down into there under the cheek. And I'm washing it out as I go. There's more water coming into this. And then it will come around and meet there. So it creates that little bit of a chin color. But then I want to re I, I still haven't got the color that I'm looking for in here. Just going to see if the cadmium in here will just pump up that area I think it will, I think we get this but then I want to take it off very very fast here I put some on and take most of it back out and I think that works very very nicely and creates the shadow and the dark across here now and that works fine. I think we, we nailed that. I think that's quite good. All right, so I'm going to go in now and um, look at the bottom mandible. Let's just put that in and let that dry before we touch anything else. There's that little bit of white shape underneath, which I haven't been able to save. But I'm going to go into that like so and stop right there there's white on the end of the big two and let's look at a dark and a little bit of warmth in and actually no let's go the other way let's go with some cobalt blue uh, some ultramarine blue and look at the back end of this shirt this water droplet I'm just going to tease a little bit of color in there first and create the sort of shadow that it forms and the little shape in front of it as it comes around and hopefully we will have our little water droplet and I'm going to put a little shape on the top because it's a reflective glass surface as it were it will have to have a little tap of um, other color into it a little bit of light at the end of the day but we're going to leave it at that for a minute I'm doing a very very similar light color in here and then tap that off tint it again maybe with a tap of blue in it this time like so and tap it off and then I'm going to use darks around that to try and 
hold it in place as it were around like so and we're going to do some more drawing with this brush in the same way as we've been doing around here and up in here a little bit of dark value over there like so start looking at some of these areas around the rump in a moment um, how are we doing Ben have we still got people watching or is everyone retired for VE day hmm. and if Ben doesn't answer I know Ben's one of them right let's put that back so I keep knocking that out of the way I'm going to come around here and get the first of these darks in for the reflections. Just going to put in with the fine brush right to start with and start to refine some of the shapes going forward. I'm going to try and paint this almost in one. So I'm going to come in with oranges and reds which are really impacting through here. Very dark marks and shapes but they set that up beautifully. Come back in with some indigo and the orange to make a very dark and very rich color which can go in too making it not too wet but wet enough um, so let's just look at some of these shapes now we've got this area that comes out through the back here and again I need it to be quite orangey quite warm colored so let's come in there with some of these colors Let's just tap that in like so and then that goes a few other marks like so up into the back of the bird and we've got the reflection of the foot and I'm going to put some in and around like so. And just try and tease these shapes out to make them sort of watery I suppose is the best the only way I can describe it watery shapes right like so and there we go and where are we Does anyone else have a problem with Luke saying his banana is running late? <laughs> mm. 17, uh, cheers John, glad you're still there. Banana refers to a bright yellow train, that's what train spotters call it, Judith. Yeah, there you go, uh, Judith. Mm. Well, I don't think, Luke, that Judith is that convinced. We know what you're on about, although I did have a little problem myself at the beginning. I wasn't sure, never heard of it, but there you go. I'm just going to put in a few and dance this little brush around and let it pick up color and deposit color into this um, where are we the large shape is coming all the way out here isn't it so let's look at that a bit more water I ought to be using a bigger brush but I actually like that this brush has got a bit of a skippy action when it's under pressure and it suddenly flicks on you and creates another mark that can be a lot of fun um, it doesn't always work but I don't see why we can't get away with it here I'm going to bring a few dark marks into there like so and this is when this painting starts to come together and we can get these colors in place There's, oh, let me do that um, we can sort of just bring one or two of these shapes this way which are reflected areas of feathering in here Bring just meet one or two together so they start to blend and move and shapes so you get these lovely little tweaks of light in here as well the dampness in the brush is lifting some of the pigment up which is doing the job for me like so they will dry some of them will dry as little cauliflowers don't worry about that right I'm just going to bring in one or two shapes out here like so this is quite a large body of water and dark there and that's one or two areas there's quite a closed bit there let's bring that out and then just tease one or two of these shapes in like this and one there and join a couple together there 
So now we're starting to form our lovely little um, bits of light. And again, if they're not exact to the photograph, don't worry. This camera took this photograph in point something of a millisecond. And point something of a millisecond next, this whole reflection would have changed. So truly, it's not a big deal. Right, I'm going to take that off there. I'm going to bring that out a little bit out this way. And so, bring that quite softly around. It's quite a little nosy bit there. I'm going to bring that in like that. Something like that. And this one wants to come out, start to meet it, but we're not going to let it. I'm going to bring that to there. And that has like a little bit on the side. That looks okay, quite nice. This one's got a lover, lovely lumpy bit on the end, which we will put on. Like so. And there are one or two other areas like that disappearing. And then there's another one here, which I actually put there, I think. So, yeah, I think it can go where I suggested. Now, this time I will go to the bigger brush because we're getting to an area where it's not as crucial to be exact. And I can just put that in very fast like that. And that one or two areas just run off like so. And then a few extra light ones. Like that. The darks under here. Okay, a little five seconds. How are we going? Mm. Right. Now then, let's just look at refining some shapes and how we're we doing for time. 2020 we are actually ahead of time tonight this will probably be a slightly shorter demo than normal I'm going to bring that dark up there I want that very dark in there so I'm going to come back in and add some reds and some um, my blue together I'm going to bring that dark down through the back of that area there and up through the back end there and that should give me enough to put that little spike of colour in there and then just flick a few shapes of dark down in here that's suggesting that's wet or near the water. Like so. Just one or two taps to suggest that there are other bits of fur behind and up to the leg. Now I've got to get the back of that heel in. I'm going to come back in with a bit of blue. I seem to have... Um, uh, gravitated to my rigger uh, for the whole of this but there you go just going to try and suggest the parts of the back of the elbow on this like so not the elbow it would be the knee isn't it of course it is what am I thinking the knee on this bird because the knee is reversed on a bird there you go I think that's right tell me if I'm wrong but I think the knee is reversed on avian forms probably one or two other things okay I'm going to come in with a bit more dark now just around here just to suggest that there's a bit more form over the back here and one or two other marks in here just to suggest there's more going on and more lights going up into there and we need to look at our bubble again and I'm just going to come in and suggest that that's got a bit of a dark mark uh, as it's sort of coming away like so 
actually I could put another one just there. there's a nice little light passage that I can just put one in there I think we'll get away with that soften the mark and look at this one as it moves forward softening the edge that I put in okay coming in with some other colors here because we've got a bit of a light over there and that then comes down into a dark through there leading down to the next actually bit of water which I have completely lost so I'm gonna try and put that water back in that little bubble of water so I'm going to dry that off and I'm going to paint some lovely bit of blue into that just going to leave it to sit there just a bit of blue and see if I can't resurrect that little water droplet that's sitting there and while I'm doing that I want to warm this area up here just a little wash general wash over it and that will come into some bluer colors through here giving some weight to this back change the brush for a slightly thicker one and work some of these colors in Okay, now then, um, I seem to feel that I've lost some light in here. I can't really get it back any sense. I'm going to try, if I can, a couple of minutes just to try and lift. I'm going to use a special little brush that I've got for that purpose of lifting pigment. It may work, it may not. If this was uh, a different paper, such as a... Um, hot press paper there's more tolerance in the paper and I could get away with it this is lifting a bit but it's not doing it as well as had I not dirted it too much in the beginning but I think we may get away with it gently softly eating into the material itself you do have to be careful because you go too much and you will run the risk of destroying um, the surface of the paper especially this paper this is a rough paper it won't put the punishment together that the hot press will but we are getting a little bit of success in lifting so that's not too bad. I can't see exactly what you're seeing, but I think we're lifting it up fairly well. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. Lift a little bit over there and warm that through. I even managed to lift the bubble out of that. Got that back. Cool. All right. Well, that's not bad. I'm not so unhappy with that now. Um, I better quit while I'm ahead, though, I've got to say. Um, so I'm going to put that down. <laughs> Uh, I like transport. Good evening, sir. Rather late than never, we got to say. You had it right a while back when you overpainted it. That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's easy done. But, you know, we can come back in there with some gouache. But I tend not to because, yeah, uh, to me, it's just not what I really want it to do. So, all right. So, I've got to use gouache on one or two parts. We know that. We've established that. Um, I just want to take a few moments to check out and see where I need to go with one or two bits and pieces. Just want to put a little bit of warmth into there. 
and I've lost a little bit of the fire in there but I'm not over worried about that we sort of in essence we've got it where we wanted it to be so that that's okay I'm just now going in and refining some of these darks in here as they come out Just checking that shape there, it's got a little bit of rise, so let's just bring that back in. And I'm still not sure about these darks in here. I'm just going to come in and change a few things. Play around with the area a little bit, tap around on there. I've got a nice dark running through and I like the way this has dried up and left the lovely reflections for that that works very very well I've got to put a few though now a bit more dark and a little bit red orange or indigo and just tap around in here because we've got a few darks to put in under there but they are a little bit too on the blue side so I'm going to warm them up with a little shade and warm up to there so it looks like we're breaking away with a bit of reflection under there a little dab but a little bit too wet and one or two marks that are breaking away this way Okay, right now I've got the top mandible to just put in and we're going to darken that down. We've got a little bit of barring across here and here and then we come down to the darker but we need to leave a little bit of light between the top and the bottom mandible. So we're going to leave that in there and let that just settle down and that should, I hope, with a bit of care be all we need it to do. Maybe a touch of warmth into that there as it comes round. Okay, that's not a disaster. And the blue, now I'm going to use a little touch of cerulean blue, nothing more. Just a little touch of cerulean blue, take the worst off, but just let that come into that shape there and go up into there. It just gives enough light to the whole thing to lift that uh, shadowy part where the beak and, and sort of the corner of the mouth as it were. I think we've got away with that. I need to put in a little bit of a cooler shadow also just under here because it's not quite being enough as it is. So I'm going to put that in and let that come down and then I need to put some gouache into that to make that pop. Okay, that's fine. We are almost there, pretty much. I mean, the water, I don't think it's not a big problem. It's uh, not too bad at all. We could always do better. Uh, I'm watching whilst bargain hunting on eBay. Yeah, I missed one today. I I had it in a bag. I was bidding more for it than, than it actually went for, and I tapped the bid right two seconds before. I forgot to tap it twice, didn't I? I thought I put a bid in, I hadn't. Oh, there you go. Nice blue and blue and yellow BR Blue 24. Never mind, it's one of those. All right, now then, let's just look at some gouache marks before we finally wind this up. And I'm just going to reinforce that little mark in the eye. Like so, that I think we, we're pretty good with. I don't really want to play around with that, but there is that little bit of light under there and a little bit on the end of the beak, not much. Now let's just look at these bits in the water, the bubbles. So let's just try and put a little bit of reflected light on there, so we can get away with it. 
If not, I can soon paint it out and change it. And if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, we're going to get rid of it. Lost that one there, but we're going to put something in there. A bit of light behind there, and some into there. a little bit of blue into that white in there. I'm not sure if that's working. Um, I'll take a look at it and if it's not we'll, we'll dismiss it. Just concentrating on that. I'm not sure if this is if I'm getting away with this one or not. Certainly, this one is fine. I think we've got that one licked, and this one is not too bad. It's sitting a bit high, and just bring some edge around there. Mm, I don't know, you can decide. <laughs> I think I could have done it a bit better. I'm not too sure. Um, it is what it is. And we are where we are. And uh, just going to try and lift a little bit out there on that beat, which I can see there's a little shape there. Just gently prising off some of the pigment. Alright people, um, I think uh, so if you would like me to do that servicing, I enjoy servicing logos, you can email me using my channel email in the description of most of my videos. Cool, I will have to take you up on that, uh, I think. Right, on the meantime, I am just going to put a signature down in the bottom here. Now, you know, everything can be done better. I don't think it's 100% too bad. I think it looks like the dab trick. Um, I'm not unhappy with it. I think, uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the way it looks, really. Um, I think I could have probably done a little bit more with the water, but I'm not unhappy with it. I think I got a little bit heavy up in this corner with it, and maybe even there, possibly. But uh, yeah, I, I quite I quite enjoyed it, and um, I hopefully you got something from this. And uh, I'm just looking at one or two. I just actually I'm going to do one more little bit. I've seen uh, there's always something. This area here is fine, but I think I want it to change its shape and come a little thicker down here. It wasn't quite looking as though it was part of that. So and I want to make it warmer on this side. A little bit of warmth into that. Okay. Right, now I think we're done. Um <laughs> good Luke. Will you go and enjoy your yellow banana? And um yeah, 
I'm sure we'll see a video of it um, on your channel very shortly I'm sure um, on the flip side of all this I hope you guys have enjoyed it I don't know how many people we ended up watching um, it's always a tough one when you're doing an animal over and above a landscape or something there's a lot more interest believe it or not uh, with regards to um, landscapes and watercolors as there are um, as there are with anything else but wildlife seems to take a little bit of a second uh, fiddle for some reason I don't know but I love painting um, thank you Judy thank you Jim uh, thanks for joining us um, and um, yeah the next one will be on Monday uh, unless you're a patron patrons it's Sunday evening I do hope that we do get a few more patrons involved on Sunday evening it's a lot of work to sit here and paint a picture for a couple so there are more of you please look and see if you can spare the time Sunday at 7 to join us that's not telling you off but uh, it'd be good if you can join in but yeah uh, next Monday then um, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet um, I might be doing an oil I'm thinking of doing a bit of a, a birdie thing with an oil or I don't know yet it might be a landscape with an oil I don't know we'll see I've done a bird tonight so maybe you'll do something different a bit of a landscape may even be doing a sunset how about a sunset I don't know but anyway um, thank you very much everybody who's joined in tonight um, thank you Bridget for watching I hope you've enjoyed yourself and enjoyed the the painting as such and uh, yeah so I'm gonna leave the chat open for a little longer we're a little bit earlier tonight than normal it came together a little bit faster but um, hmm, I hope you enjoyed it so with that said keep yourself safe keep distance keep painting and if you're a patron keep putting them on the Facebook page guys don't forget that um, au revoir Bridget take care um, good I'm glad you enjoyed it Wendy um, no, 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 no. Teresa oh good I'm glad the bubbles do I wasn't too sure <laughs> they're always a bit of a funny thing to lay into a painting but there you go uh, Bexhill West thank you brilliant uh, lovely outcome thanks James thanks for watching that uh, Bernadette hi from Ireland thanks so much for the great video Bernadette uh, you were quietly on the side there but thank you for letting me know that you were watching and I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully see you again maybe on Monday when we do another one and see how we go from there John thank you very much take care mate all the best um, who haven't I said cheerio to yet it must be somebody Derek are you still there or have you disappeared if not I shall say goodbye to you chum thanks for joining us and popping by um, Ben I know you're still there where are we just go back across the whole of the chat very quickly uh, bye from Hastings, Tro Ben, Tro Wendy, <laughs> and if I have never is it Tro Benedict, Tro everybody, happy painting. Catch you all soon. I'm gonna turn the chat off, uh, the chat off now, and turn off the stream.